Welcome to Ear Biscuits, I'm Link. And I'm Red. This week at the round table of dim lighting, we are exploring the question, what's it like to sleep on a bus? <laughs> and other <laughs> stories from the road. Oh yeah, we've been on the road, y'all. We've been traveling around, doing shows, and uh, uh, lots of bunk, bus bunk time for introspection. Um, I had a horrifying experience which I'll share a little bit later. Um, yeah, but so I also been... had some really good experiences that, oh, well, that share those as well. changed my life as well as the life of my children. Yeah, so we've been on the road on tour and then I tacked some time in uh, North Carolina at the end of my time and you came back here and had a staycation. So we'll, we'll get into talking about that a little bit but we do want to let you know that while we are back temporarily, we are going back out on the road, yes, we're gonna keep telling you about when we're gonna be on the road. And you know what? You should go go on the internets and look around at all the fun that we had on our uh, this this last tour. We've got there's uh well we're gonna talk to him about it. Well, there's definitely photos though. Yeah, there's photos. There's out photo there. evidence of the things that we did and how much fun people had at the things that we were doing. Starting that you September fourth, September fourth, uh, the next leg of the tour begins. Houston, Texas, New Orleans. Birmingham, Jacksonville, Florida, Tampa, Florida. Then we go to Las Vegas, October 19th. November 20th, Albuquerque, New Mexico, then Phoenix, Arizona, Sacramento, California, and Valley Center, California. Go to retandlinklive.com to get tickets. And to clarify something, uh, we, we talked about this on our Instagram, one of those Instagram videos that we did where we're eating tour food, but um, a lot, we met somebody on the road and uh, we, we tend to meet people when we're in these cities and they tend to say things like, oh, I didn't know you were in town. That's why we continue talking about the shows. But then we met someone who did know about the show, but she was like, I don't have $300. And we were like, what are you talking about $300? And I think what she was doing and what a lot of people are doing is if you just Google Rhett and Link concert tickets, well, some sponsored sites. I do that sites, every day. <laughs> some sponsored sites for where they're reselling tickets are gonna come up and you don't buy the tickets there. Go to retinlinklive.com to get the best prices on tickets. I think we've got tickets starting at around $30 uh, for these upcoming shows. So uh, we're trying to make it as affordable as possible so that won't be an excuse. Uh, if you don't know about it, that maybe that's our fault, but uh, if you're paying a whole lot of money for your tickets, that might be your fault if you're going to the wrong place. The, the bus life was something that was interesting, which we'll talk about, but also the culinary lifestyle that we assumed while on tour was I can't I can't consequential. I can't decide if it was great or if it was horrible. It was, it was great both. It, it was both. It was great and horrible. Um we had this idea and if you're you know if you happen to catch an Instagram live like we're talking like an hour before our show, maybe a little bit more sometimes, we would sit down and we would eat what you or at least those of you who voted and responded to our Instagram post, we ate the two most popular signature dishes from this most signature restaurant at each city that we were in, according to you. We pitted them against each other. And it turns out that those signature dishes are not things like kale salads. No. As you might imagine, they are things like, uh, you just in increased the probability of you having a heart attack by at least 2%, like every time you eat something. It I was that kind of meal. I think by a certain point in the tour, we were eating dishes that were just called cholesterol. Yes. Like, okay, we got a big um, styrofoam clamshell, open that thing up, oh look, it's just cholesterol. Well, literally one of them was just fried cheese, dip that you dip in ranch dressing. <laughs> That was pretty great. And you know what, it was really good. That was in Milwaukee, that was it the cheese curds. Yeah, cheese curds. Uh, which in incidentally. Milwaukee put Mil a hurt on Milwaukee, me, Milwaukee won, okay, Milwaukee won the food contest. Not only did they have the best dish according to me, I think they had the best two dishes according to me. Now I, I think you like some, and they also had the custard. I mean the custard, the hamburger, and the cheese curds. Milwaukee knows what they're doing when it comes to eating. Cheeseburger and custard were from cops. And we would, I mean, once you start eating a cheeseburger and not it's just really any good. Not just though, a restaurant called Cops. K-O-P-P-S. Yeah, we didn't, we're not taking food from the police. Right, 
What, you don't trust the police? <laughs> no, that's not, we gonna get, <laughs> that is not what. We gonna get civic. That is not what on this I podcast. intended to talk about. You're gonna have like, some civic I'm, I'll controversy. Just you said, we got that food from cops. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you talking about from cops? Yeah, now you're I, accepting food from. Well, I the I I tried to pronounce police. it. Police. I tried to emphasize the K and the two P's when I said it. Yeah, and no one except your own brain saw that. Right, but I did see it. K O P P S. When you're eating a cheeseburger, that's as good as that cheeseburger. You don't merely just taste the cheeseburger. You eat the whole cheeseburger. Yeah, I could. Even if you do have a whole yeah, I could clamshell full of curds over here, and then. You the way to the custard is right next to it. See, I made a curds and whey. Yeah, joke. I, and I saw you. You didn't even have to emphasize it. I knew that you were saying W H E W W H E Y <laughs> W H E W. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> um, now speaking of tasting, I'm. I think I'm still tasting what I had yesterday as my last meal in North Carolina because the th the thing that oh, you yeah? got to do is you got to come back to California and like go back to a California diet and you probably feel like clean and light and youthful. I, I matter of fact, I ate a vegan dinner last night. Yeah, see, and um, I did not. Boy, my farts. Well, let's not talk about your farts. We do that enough. I mean. <laughs> Uh, I don't wanna talk about them except to say that like it ain't all peaches and cream on this side of the table. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, but but you, you but your body will you adjust. A, you had a week's worth of North Carol what, Carolina hurt? What I did is I did the tour eating and then I went to North Carolina and I was like, ah, I'm still on vacation and I'm here in North yeah. Carolina and yeah. I just kept on eating that way and the, the meal that is currently in my stomach and I have actually like felt it lurching. What? Multiple times. Okay, you didn't kill it first. I went. My my final meal was cookout. Oh my gosh! And let me tell you what I got. I love cookout. And I don't even know if you know about this yet. I don't even want to hear. I don't this. know if you know about the uh, all the sides that are offered. Okay, so in case you didn't know, cookout is a fast food hamburger place in the south that has what makes it unusual is not just the fact that it's good food, but the sides that you can get other than fries are basically just a ridiculous, there are no rules in the universe. Like they've thrown all rules of what a side is to the side because I got, first of all, I didn't get a, a cheeseburger, I got a barbecue sandwich because I was like, you know what? I've never had the barbecue sandwich from Cookout. I've never done that I've either. always gotten it from Smithfields and we, and, and we had one meal left and I was like, I haven't had a barbecue sandwich yet. Uh, Locke and Shepard had never been to cookout. Dang. I, or, or I already could, knew you were a horrible parent. Could not remember the last time they went to cookout. Mm -hmm. You know, because Locke would have been, you know, a lot younger. You hit him on the head every time you take him to cookout? So I, uh, I got a like, barbecue sandwich. Like men in black. And then the side that I got, of course, one of the sides was a corn dog. <laughs> right. Because that's a side. Nuggets can be a side. Did you get nuggets? No, the other side was a chicken quesadilla. <laughs> <laughs> but you just got them. You Hold just on. got three. I just got mains. three mains. But that's what makes it so crazy. They got chicken quesadilla. They actually have enchiladas as sides too. Now what? you don't say that word right. Quesadilla, the other one. Enchilada. Yeah, it's not an inch. It's an inch. Enchilada. It's an e, not an you i. You can't be talking to people about ways to pronounce words, man. Enchilada. Well, you want, it's enchilada if you want to get in. You say enchilada. Enchilada, Encha, enchilada. <laughs> that ain't right. <laughs> but go ahead, we know what you mean. Well, well then you should pinch me and tell me, <laughs> and tell me that I'm saying it wrong. I'll pinch you. Um, so, but I, did, but I didn't get a, the, where I drew the line is I didn't get a, a milkshake because they have over oh, 40 different flavors of milkshakes, including oh, one in July, a watermelon milkshake Watermelon shake that has pieces of watermelon in it that's only served between July and August. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. And and so and that's it's a still, small place. If you ever look through the window at them making all that there's stuff, there's like one person in there just spinning around. It's it's like a one like a cartoon. Well, I've seen multiple people, but there's only room for I one person. I saw one girl. It. You, I saw one girl. And I you, think you saw six girls, but they were in the space of one girl. And you know how some cookouts have like a table outside of them. Yeah. This cookout that was somewhere between the beach and RDU had nothing. It was just like, we do not expect you to stick around. Well, yeah. 
So I just yeah, drove across you, the street to an abandoned parking lot, which there's so much of like a just a, space. abandoned space, buildings yeah. in down east. There's just nothing there. There's nothing there between the beach and Raleigh. There's nothing. I I, I used to drive that every week to see my in laws. Um, so it's like a, it was a post apocalyptic type of vibe to it. From time to time, I, for the cookout in the Bojangles. I'm, ta I'm tasting either a barbecue sandwich or a corn dog or a quesadilla How, in no particular order. I can't believe they have enchiladas. I did not, I couldn't, I, I, I would have bet against that. I, well, I'm not confirming that. Lance, uh, we were with Lance and Lacey and Lance told me, he may have meant quesadilla. Oh. Because when I got there, I saw a quesadilla and just got it. The menu is so big, I didn't wanna then continue reading to see if they had enchiladas how as was well. The, how was the, uh, <laughs> Barbecue sandwich? barbecue sandwich. Solid, very good. It's, uh, have sauce already on it? They asked me if I wanted slaw and Texas Pete on it. I said, well, who do you think I am? Texas Pete on it, huh? Yes. Hmm. Oh, I would have gotten it, but. It was very good. Uh, steamed That's bun. not, Texas Pete is not a barbecue sauce. And do you know that, yeah, because well, yeah, well, it's got, it's, it's well, oh, you mean does it already have like vinegar barbecue sauce? Yeah, it's got, it's got some sort of vinegar sauce in the meat. Okay. Do you know Bojangles, is also now serving a pulled pork sandwich. It's on the menu. I didn't get that. Really? And I'm sorry to, I'm sorry I had to throw somebody under the bus. Just quickly let me do this. Atlantic Beach, on Atlantic Beach, which is technically an outer bank, you know, Emerald Isle and Atlantic Beach, they're all on this island. Well, there's a Bojangles on that island. And I was staying on that island for a few days. And we I took Shepard to Bojangles because I was like, I haven't been to Bojangles yet. I get to Bojangles at Atlantic Beach. I get in line and you know how they have like, the, the only place in the world that does the, Bojangles is the only place in the world that does the line where you kinda go around like you're getting ready to like go on a ride. Like it switches back. Oh, not in the car, you're talking about in the restaurant. In the restaurant, yeah, there's yeah. a switch back. Yeah. And then you get up there and then the, you order and they say it into the microphone. <laughs> it's awesome. I'm just wondering yeah. why they're still doing that. But it, it, it that's like an amusement park right too. It's like, buckle up. The first, thing that w threw me off is I'll get in line and there's a there's a murmur going through the line and it's that they're out of dirty rice, which oh, I wanted dirty rice. I was gonna get dirty rice and beans, Cajun pintos. I love the fact that made its way back through the line. They're out of dirty rice, what, like, what are we gonna do? Oh, they're out of dirty rice. Should the we, roller coaster's should broke. Should we leave, should we cross, go? should we go back to the mainland, should we go to Moorhead City? You know, those kinds right. of things are happening. And then uh, I'm like, okay, well, I don't have to get dirty rice. 45 minutes later what? is when I was receiving my food at the other, 45 minutes later. This place, I love Bojangles, but the one in Atlantic Beach is so mismanaged that it is a disgrace to the name of Bojangles. It is, at because Locke and his cousins went and they also had to wait 45 minutes at a different time. Different time? I, I realize that it's, it's peak season. But you sure was, you weren't going to Joe Bangles? There's there's 11 people in line. There were 11 people in line. And some of them were like three people together as a party. Like we're not, it wasn't 11 different groups. It was like <sighs> four different groups, 45 minutes. Did you band together with those people and like oh, set I'm not up done. a tent? They're out of dirty rice. I get up there, I order. They're still out of dirty rice at that point and I didn't even ask for it. They're out of honey mustard. <laughs> I tell you, man, post-apocalyptic. Then we get our tea. Of course, we got sweet tea. Jesse wanted. She said, "Bring me back an unsweetened tea." And then Shepard and I were like, "We're gonna get sweet tea because we're here." When in Rome, we sit down, and Shepard's like, "I think I got mom's tea." And then he says, "Let me taste." And he tastes another. He says, "No." And then he takes mine. He says, "Dad, these are all unsweet." And I was like, "Shepard, this is just your ten-year-old palate. You know, let me let me taste them. They're all unsweet." I go back up and I say, "Sorry, you, dude, you put uh, unsweet tea in these sweet teas." He said, like, "Okay." He 45 gives, minutes later. That happened in about seven minutes. It wasn't oh, too long. Okay. He fills them back up. We go back down and, and Shepard says, Dad, they're still unsweet. I taste them. He's right. They have not put any sugar in the sweet tea. I, I begin to see people who've already waited 45 minutes for their meal getting up and looking at their tea. There's an old man walking by. He's like talking to himself. I was like, the tea's not sweet, is it? He was so, he didn't even hear me. He was like bruh, bruh. He goes up, oh, yeah. he gets his tea, and then there's a woman back there. She's like, y'all, the tea's not sweet. This is bad. I mean, I this, this is they like They forgot the, to put sugar in the tea. This is the start of a riot in North Carolina. Let me say, there's a Bojangles representative listening. Send help to the one in Atlantic Beach, man. 
because I'm not gonna go to it anymore. It's like, I, didn't, I don't wanna ruin, it, that food is so good. I mean, when Bojangles runs out I don't of dirty rice an for honey mustard, you need to airdrop some, well, if, and some listen, supplies. And I believe. Airdrop it, a manager in there. I believe that it might be actual sacrilege to serve sweet tea that's not sweet. I think those people might go to hell. Me too. I think that might be an unforgivable sin. Right, especially when they're like, no, but this one is. <laughs> oh, and if you do it twice, yes, yes, you go to the third level of hell. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for that little rant, I didn't expect to do that, but uh, I was really upset, very upset. I, I would be afraid. I mean, with those things happening at a Bojangles, I would literally, I would be like, kids, we gotta get out of here because something bad's gonna happen. <laughs> like. Someone is gonna get too upset and yeah. it's gonna be like, they're gonna be ripping like paper bags and I don't know, throwing tenders. Yeah. I, well, they don't call them tenders. What they, they call they them call Supremes. Them, Supremes. They also have home style tenders. Yeah, they're not hot. They don't have the spice in it. For the children. Yeah, I saw, the, I saw a full grown man order those. And I was, for the weak. I shook my head at that guy. For the weak yeah. men and children. <laughs> Cause it's not that <laughs> hot. <laughs> oh man, so you're, you're hurting. I feel good now that I got that out though. You got that cookout in you. I got this V, I, man, it was it was like, it was beets and yams and they had this Yum. thing, they had a thing called barbecue and it was. Uh, they had a thing called barbecue. It was made out of mushrooms. Where was this at? Cafe Gratitude. Oh, that place. We talked about this place. And when you yeah. order off I the like menu, it, it's adjectives like whole and complete and serene, and when you order, you're supposed so to order. Hole with a W or just H O L E. Put this in your hole. We're, we're having your a real mouth hole. Uh, homonym of an episode here, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, well, sometimes, man. <laughs> and sometimes you got to clarify. There were no cops there. <laughs> um, it was, it was, it was. What was I saying? Hole. Uh, <laughs> yeah, when you order, you say, "I am devoted." Yeah, and I, then you get I, a dish called devoted. I have trouble. I have trouble with that system, but I I'm, appreciate it. What I did it, it. I appreciate what it, it what it's trying like, to do. It's trying to give you gas, and I'm not talking about and it's like succeeding. Just, it's not the volume; it's the flavor. Oh gosh! It's the snit, 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 <laughs> snit. All right. We, I mean, we got more to talk about in terms of our tour, so let's switch gears to going back to the tour. Um, but first, the bus gears. But first, we want to let you know that you can grab these ear biscuits mugs. You can literally grab them. There's a handle. You can yeah, also figuratively, figuratively grab them at mythical dot store. When your ears are drinking our mouths, your lips can be drinking from our mugs. Mythical dot store. Mythical dot store. We will uh, did a little. Maybe, little, I could have been case of come up. Could have been breading. Could have been the little hard breading on the stick at the bottom of a corn dog. That <laughs> sticks with you a while, you know. And I always eat that. Oh, off you of nibble it. that stuff off. Oh, yeah, that's the best part. You nibble, nibble, I, nibble. Listen, nibble. You nibble I that would, stick. I would buy sticks of just the hard, crusty batter. You know what you can do is you can go through the trash cr can cr of crusty a cookout. Sticks. You can go through the cookout trash can, crusty sticks, and get out the the corn dog sticks. Nope, but they don't. People eat them in their cars and at home. Nobody sticks around. But when you're driving out of the parking lot, you throw it. I got to go to the corn dog castle for that refuse bin. Mythical dot store. Get uh, it. Before we get back into the story, we do want to let you know that this is the next to last ear biscuits before we're taking a short summer break. We're uh, taking a three week break. Am so I right, Kiko? Three weeks without ear biscuits. Uh, find another podcast. No, don't find another podcast. Listen to old ear biscuits. Do that in your in the three weeks that we're not here. Don't get hooked on anybody else now. And then we'll be back with more. Uh, so next to last, we got one more next week, and then a three week break, and we'll be back. The, I, I'll quickly go through the rhythm of tour, you know, because I think it can be romanticized, and there's many ways to do it. I mean, we were we're spoiled on a number of fronts. Um, first of all, I just want to brag about everybody who came out to this leg of the tour and saw us. You guys were super supportive and and welcoming, and you know even it, it, I'm always fascinated, and we're, we're so analytical when it comes to anything we create or anytime we perform. Like the moment we're done putting something out into the world, 
or we come backstage after something, we're immediately assessing how well it went. And it, it, it never fails to surprise me how different audiences are different. Well, how all audiences are a little bit different. The things that as a whole they, that, that resonate with them. Some audiences are really, they like to cheer. Some audiences like to laugh. Some audiences do both. Some like to talk. Some like to talk to us and I think we, there are cues that we give that welcome that and sometimes at the start of a show, we kinda, we're a little more open than other times and we made it a point to try a few new songs and the banter in between, like we, th that's our moment to see if we can create something new every single time, give or take. But we're, I, I, you know, we talked about how when comedians or musicians tour, a lot of times they have to win over the audience and we never have to do that because the people who show up are dedicated mythical beasts, so there's this comfort level and so like I said, we're spoiled on that front. We also have a bus that we travel in. Now, what, when, when the bus goes a really long distance in between shows, we do fly, but we finally realized it took, for most of the tour in Mythic Alley, we didn't do this, but we started to realize towards the end that, hey, we can, we can sleep on the bus. This can actually be fun. This might be the best part of the whole thing. Mm. Uh, maybe not for a six, seven young man. Well, considering with, that the bunks are six six, yeah, in length. Um. So, but we are spoiled to have a bus that has a sleeping nice bunks, and then it pulls a trailer with, all, with merch and stuff behind it. And so, us and the crew, we basically traveled on the bus the whole time. I also brought uh, my kids, Lily and Lincoln, along with us um, on this leg of the tour. But just having a bus like that, not having to like sleep in a van or like out of a crappy hotel or something well, was, and, it was it, we were we, spoiled. And I don't know if this is necessarily the case with uh, um, you know, like a band that would be going around. I mean, I guess they do stop somewhere to shower, but we do <clears throat> got that you got that corn dog crust coming up. We do also <clears throat> so basically we as soon as the show's over, well we have our meet and greet. We usually don't get out of a town and start you know, the bus doesn't start rolling until after midnight, maybe 12.30. And then we roll into the next town. We Most of us go to sleep immediately or within an hour or so. And then you don't set an alarm or anything, you just wake up. Well you said we roll into town and then most of us go to sleep. No, once the bus starts moving, we go to sleep and then it's driving to the place. Oh, we roll out of town. Roll out of town, yes. Yeah, so like an hour after we, we leave, everybody's pretty much asleep. And so then, you don't set an alarm, you just wake up at some, you know, you went to bed, you go to bed that late. If you're going to bed at one, one thirty, you know, most people are gonna wake up at nine, 10. I'm gonna wake up at 10 or 11. And uh, then we and wake, realize the bus is no longer moving and that everyone has vacated the bus except for me and my children. Usually the Neils are the last off the bus. I, I was the last off the bus one time, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, most of the time you guys are, 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 I get up and I see all your shoes are still there. I'm like, oh, they're still here. Uh, but then there's, Gary, our tour manager has created a basically a map or, or like a very simple set of directions for like, w this is how you get to the hotel. Like here's your hotel key. You do have a hotel because you're gonna go there and basically shower. And we would just basically shower and then. We'd have a couple of hours go to out do something. And go out and eat lunch and then maybe you know, walk around, or if if they're scooters, we would scoot around town oh, for a yeah. couple of hours before we have to get back for sound check and signing posters for the meet and greet and all that. I'll tell you, Denver's a good place to scooter. Very good. They got this river there that's like got rapids all in it, and then there's like it's fancy all the paths they got around this river. Yeah, that was a. Uh, I'd say sco Denver was the scooter scooting highlight. Yeah, scooting capital of the world, you might say. Scooter low light was probably Omaha? Omaha, I would say. I mean, more for Britain than for us because, man, he took a tumble. Well, and I saw the whole thing in slow motion. Now let me just say that right before Britain had an, his incident on he the hit scooter. A hole. Uh, I was thinking about, we were in Omaha and there, there's also a giant river, is it the Missouri River, is that what that was? Yeah. Coming through Omaha 
and like we're going all around and scooting up and down these paths and there's this little like park next to like the ConAgra campus there and we're like going around this pond and I was thinking after we'd been out for like an hour and a half, I was like kind of surprised that no one has fallen yet and I actually in my mind was like, kind of surprised that like one of the kids, and when I say one of the kids, I kind of throw Britain. Britain is more a kid <laughs> than he, we're, we're, he's 19. We, we, but could, we could be his dad, yeah. right? I mean, he's only five years older than Lincoln. And I was like, I'm surprised that one of them hasn't fallen on these scooters yet. And literally three minutes later, you I'm- You voodooed him. I'm going, I didn't say anything. Did I'm, you stab a doll? I'm going over this bridge in this park, this sort of arched bridge, and we get to the, and Britain's in front of me, and it was just this change in the surface, this little bump. Sometimes all it takes is it a little a, bump. It was a hole, because I hit it too. Yeah, it was just a drop off. It was a drop off and then a bump on the other side, because it was like this depressed area of like bricks. And he hit it, and I saw him begin to lose control, and then he overcorrected, and then he came back, then he overcorrected again, and then he flew off of the scooter at full speed, and did a pretty athletic move to like, fall down and roll and do a back flip and then land in the grass. But I could see on his face immediately that he was shaken. All I could see is I was coming over the bridge horizon were his feet in the air. Oh, so you saw that. Yeah, and then he was he was rolling. He tore up his elbow and his in one of his hands and it's like, hold on man, those are your money makers. Right. You're a guitarist. He, and he had a show, I mean we had a show, the, well he had a show yeah. the next night. Right, yeah. because we didn't have a show that night. Now, thankfully, Jenna, who is here, was also there at the time because Link and I just proceeded to laugh and make fun of Brett <laughs> as he just sat there in shock. <laughs> and uh, we we knew he wasn't dead. He wasn't really he, hurt. He wasn't I mean, actively like, bleeding. There wasn't it, anything broken. Well, he was actively bleeding. He was actively bleeding. In fact, he got blood all over his pants. Yeah, he was shaking. He got he got a little pale. He was a little bit in shock, yeah. but we knew that he wasn't permanently injured, so we laughed. And uh, that's what guys do, man. And uh, and then Jenna came in and was thinking straight and strategically. What was that magic fluid you started pouring on his? On his um, arm. On like contact solution or something. <laughs> she I had, just threw. I had my water bottle. It was I just it was just water. water. Oh, it was just water. She used her gl now. She sacrificed her cleaner. her glasses. Cloth. Cleaner, yeah. Oh, it was cloth. And that's I what, thought the water, when you said, I, I'm gonna use my glasses cleaner, I thought all of that liquid, no. up until this moment, I thought she was pouring glasses cleaner all over his arm. I was like, hmm, no, that's that, like MacGyver. But that's also poison. It's, I thought it was alcohol. <laughs> no, I think that, I think that like, Which is why well, I was just sitting on the side laughing. Because who am I to, I, I could have, who knows what I would have poured in his wound. Right. Hey, let me pee on it, man. I think when you get stung by a, some asphalt, you gotta pee yeah, on right, it. Yeah, just like a jellyfish. Uh, but I probably could have convinced him, that would have been funny. Jenna took care of him, and we we <laughs> did all scoot back to a place where we could drop the scooters off, because we were outside of the scooter off-loading area that we, we couldn't, it, the app would not accept us to just stop where we were. But he ended up being okay. He looked kinda cool playing the next night with a large bandage. Yeah. Around he, his elbow. He got some sympathy points or whatever. But anyway, in terms of the schedule, yeah, we typically do something for a couple of hours. Usually no one would get hurt. And then we'd show up at the venue, we'd do a sound check, we'd sign posters for the meet and greet, and then we'd just sit backstage, we'd, do, we'd eat our food, and this, so it ended up being like three hours of just kind of sitting around backstage and then doing the show and the whole thing starts over again. Um, but you would really get into the rhythm of like, I can't wait to get back to the bus. And like, I, I, mean, I know that was Lily's favorite part. There's something about climbing on this bus and like, at some points the bunks were three high and at some points they were too high. When they're three high, you, you cannot sit up in your bunk. You just gotta roll in and roll out, like log roll. But we got the two, the, they gave me and you. I still could. The two high. Yeah, and some of the crew. But the youngsters got the three high. And um, I it, there is something like cozy. It's like a cozy hideout, and you lay down in the thing, and then you pull your curtain closed, and you velcro it, and then you and then you can take your pants off. Hmm. Or take whatever you got on off if you want to. I, I had, wasn't naked. In I there. had the really comfortable pants though that I 
that I left on because it's know. like it's almost like a blanket in and of itself. There's a little light in there, and then you can set up your earphones and you can listen to some like a uh, a playlist to help you sleep, or you can just go to sleep to the murmur and the rustle of the bus, and that that was a lot of fun. But I started playing. Well, every night I would go to sleep with. Um, I downloaded this playlist on Spotify called Deep Sleep. And I would listen to that thing. And it would it was like eight or nine hours of just ambient sleep inducing and then some pianos over top of and that. And what, what headphones are you employing for this? Um, my Bose noise canceling in-ear headphones, not a sponsor. Right, because you can't use the AirPods because they would run out eventually. I actually did use AirPods sometime and they would just fall out of my ears and then I'd wake up in the middle of the night searching for an AirPod because I'd be too an anxious that I'd lost it forever. So does this preclude you from sleeping on your side? I would roll all over and sometimes the whole cord would just tangle around my waist like yeah, but a belt. What about ear pain when you, I, I'm a, Exclusive yeah. side sleeper. I'm a back sleeper, and a, but I did sleep on my side some, and there is inner ear pain where it like you're smushing That's it. That's why in. I can't listen to things in the ears. That's not the worst thing about it though, but I will tell you what is, and that's when you're listening to an eight hour playlist of just instrumental ambient music, which is great to like send you into a deep stupor. But you only do this on while traveling. You don't do this at home. I do not. Hmm. And I'm laying there sleeping. And then all of a sudden, a woman says to me, don't leave me. And I woke up terrified. <laughs> and I, I like look around, there's no woman. Right. There's, no, there's, no, there's nobody talking on this deep sleep playlist, much less singing, this is instrumental. And I'm like, I, was, I dreamt that a woman said don't leave me. I went back to sleep. Was it Christie's voice? But I was kinda, it was, a, it was, it was more dramatic than that. It was a dramatic Christie? It was a dramatic, I don't know, it was, it was, it, it was a lot of need in it. It was, it was, it was very disconcerting and I don't remember dreaming anything but I, I was able to go back to sleep and then I went deep again, nothing. Wake up next day, fine. Fast forward to the next night, same routine to go to sleep. I've been asleep for a few hours. And then all of a sudden, the woman, don't leave me. She returned. And this time I woke up and I'm like, okay, I know, is there a ghost in here? I don't, I don't know what's going on. And I'm like, it's the freaking playlist. In yeah. the middle of a nine hour playlist that's just instrumental, there is one Sna sound snippet in the middle of a song where a woman says, don't leave me. And that is terrifying. It's a uh, Spotify, you gotta remove that from the playlist. And matter of fact, I found it because the, the third time I was like, you know what, when this happens, I'm gonna take a screenshot and I'm gonna remember so I can remember where this is. It's just an Easter egg, man. It's an Easter egg that people who commit fully to the playlist experience. Alana Johnson, breathing star. Yeah, it's Alana. I kind of, I like to feel needed and wanted. Not when you're in a deep sleep, man. It's like, do I have to, what? I'm not leaving you, girl. I'm laying here asleep. Don't leave me, don't leave me. I'm not, <laughs> it freaked me out, man. So then I, uh, you know, I I told the people at the show that night, and then there was a good runner about "Don't Leave Me." Yeah, it it really worked. It did. It's the type of stuff you live for, you know, getting scared. I thought crap scared. What I was thinking was going to happen is the music was going to drop out completely, and someone was going to say, "Don't leave me," <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and then it no, was going to come back cruel. in because that that would that would wake me up for sure. Um, so that was a low light, but I would say a highlight of the tour. Besides, again, like I said, we're so spoiled by the. But it was just a great audience reception and it was great to connect with so many mythical beasts and to get even more of an idea of what makes them tick and what makes them laugh, you know? Yeah. Um, it, 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 it turned out to be very special for me because Lily and Lincoln were there. Uh, I didn't think Lily was gonna be able to come but then the fact that they both were able to come. Now, I, I, well, I mean, we should say that um, 
Locke was gonna come, but then because of. He's got, he had like five basketball games in that in that 11 day period, so it would have been. He would have left his boys hanging. Yeah, he couldn't, he couldn't do it. Yeah. Um, but he was obviously invited and there was, a, there was a chance he may come and then and then hopefully in the future he'll be able to do something like that because it was so special for me and my kids. And of course Lando's too young, Shepard's probably too young because they, they need to they be had supervised to, they had more to closely. They fend for themselves. The kids yeah. had to fend for themselves. Um, but you know, it just, it, it wasn't, I realized that it was such a sweet and special time for me and Lillian Lincoln afterward when I started to reflect on the fact that really the only time that we spend that much time together, like every waking hour um, for 10 days straight, the only time we do that is like if we go on a family vacation, right. you know? And a family vacation is a totally different vibe than being on tour because um, everybody's in a different mode when vacation is happening. But when we were on tour, it's like we're in tour mode. So like we're working and we're doing things. And I think they they kind of rose to the challenge. I wouldn't call it a challenge, but they kind of rose to the occasion of, hey, we're we're part of the crew. You know, they they rolled some posters and they would hand them out at the meet and greets. They didn't roll posters every night. Sorry, Jenna. But you know, they felt that they were treated as equals. You know, and I could definitely see that in their takeaway as they like reported back to Christy and Lando when we got back home how much they enjoyed it and they talked about tour life. I I was hopeful but I I didn't wanna be too hopeful. I, you know me, I think of this, per oh when they get back, they're gonna have this perfect idea of what tour was and it's gonna be the most influential thing in their entire lives. So I, you know, I didn't wanna go into full dad link mode with my expectations but I was, so I was, pleasantly surprised that it meant so much to them and um, they said they had a great time and I think it's just spending that amount of time together, you really get to, again, when you're not in vacation mode, it was a great opportunity for us to get to know each other because you, you, I was able to observe them interacting with the other members of the crew and like, okay, when do they choose to pipe up and what do they choose to say and what are their perspectives on things? It's something that I don't have the benefit of that often and I actually thought about, I got a little jealous of Christy over the years who as difficult and demanding as it, ha, as it was for her to homeschool the kids for all those years, they've been to public school for, this is their third year now, but and the same with Jesse, it's like, I got to see a little bit of a side of them that I think Christy and I, I'm guessing Jesse got to see of our kids that we don't get to see as much when it's not like you're constantly with them, you know? And then at the end of 11 days, you don't, then you're good. You don't, you, <laughs> you don't have to do it anymore. Yeah, right, like they're good. Um, but you know, it, it just turned out to be a very special time. And you know what, they said that they enjoy getting to know you more in kind of a work mode. They. Uh, unprompted, they were like, you know what? I actually have a different view of Rhett. And I'm like, and I told him about my vacation theory and I extended, I was like, yeah, a lot of times when you see Rhett, it's like, it's in family or if we do vacations together, it's in that type of mode. And it was just like, the, the thing that, I think it was Lincoln who said, it was like, maybe it was Lily. She was like, you know what, you guys, I thought it was cool to get to see you guys actually enjoy hanging out with each other. I was like, well, have you ever watched our show? But I think she knows that that's a show. And, but it's not a show, I think is what she said. It's like, I enjoyed you guys enjoying each other. Well, I think, <laughs> well, I, I, yeah, I didn't know what I thought about, you know, my first thought when they were gonna go, I was like, oh no, we're gonna have to like, worry about them and yeah, not be able to get into places because they're too young and et cetera, et cetera. But, I my thought was You talking about strip clubs again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my my thought I've never been in a strip club, just for the record, my, that was a joke. My thought was uh No judgment if you have hey, listen, I let's change this up. Yeah, why I'm just yeah. Why are you talking about strip clubs? I, I didn't say it. Didn't say anything about that. I'm talk I was talking about bars. You know, we're eighteen yeah. and up or twenty one and up, you know. Some there's some establishments where children are not allowed. Right. Right. Um so but I actually think that having, and I think that Britain also contributed to this as well. Yeah. Having younger people there, like ch definitely 
significantly changes the dynamic because we have a tendency to just be in work mode like all the time. Now sure, oh let's go get on these scooters and, and you know run around, like we would do, if it was just me and you and it has been just me and you and go, gone out and, and just scooted around or whatever, but I think that something about having kids there, it lightens the atmosphere a little bit. It's not that we don't know how to have fun with each other, it's just that we have so many things going on that there's at any moment we could stop and start talking about some you know, work related thing or some project and even yeah. if it's a creative thing, we'll do it in a very serious manner. And so I think that they actually kind of like change the dynamic, uh, the group dynamic and they're, you know, they're just being kids, just being silly. Yeah and kind of having this vibe of wanting them to have a good time so electing to do more things to have a good time versus just maybe I'll just sit in the hotel or let's talk about work. And I, you know, I do want to say I really do appreciate the way that you included them and you know, on the it was unfortunate but totally understandable that Locke wasn't able to come but the fact that you were able to extend yourself to include them as much as you did, they without me asking, they noticed and I really appreciated that too. I thought that was very gracious and um yeah, I, I think it was I think fun was had by everyone except for maybe Britain's elbow. And I think it's cool just in conclusion that um you know, a lot of people ask us, what do your kids think about what you do? And it it was just it meant a lot to me that they thought it was fun and cool to be a part of something their dad was doing. Yeah. You know? It was there weren't any eye rolls. It was like, "Hey, this is Yeah, and that and I This is cool. And that I yeah, I do want, you know, and if Lot can't go in the next couple of years or whatever, then hopefully Shepard will be able to like I I do want them to be able to experience it because um, yeah, it's like I, I, there's a different feel than just saying, oh, I'm gonna come on set when you have a guest that I'm interested right. in or something like that. There's a, there's a, it's a different, it's a different thing, you know. I'm, I'm glad that we'll see. we had the opportunity to give them that gift and I know, I, I believe that they'll remember that trip forever and that's what I hoped for, so. That, uh, that, that was my highlight. But I, I want to hear about your vacation too because you, I, we haven't had a chance to talk. Um, yeah, so we got through with the tour. I, I flew directly from Minneapolis to the beach in North Carolina to spend time with my wife's family, uh, her, her parents and her sister and husband and kids. Um, and we were going to uh, spent a couple of days in one location and a couple of days in a few days in another location. So, you may, if you followed me on Instagram, shout out to Red MC on Instagram, very dynamic Instagram account from time to time. Um, you may have seen my uh, what went down on the day of July 4th. I don't know if you saw any of this. The only thing I saw was you looking for horses, which you can leave for Instagram. After that, I was like, okay. Oh, you missed, you missed, well that was just the, the warm up story. You didn't see the fireworks show? Uh uh. <laughs> Brother. Okay, so I've talked about this before. I've talked about how my father-in-law used to like get fireworks, like together, he would produce the show, i.e. he would finance the show and then I would go down. He would down executive to, produce. I would go down to South Carolina and uh, buy the fireworks and then spend all day like wiring them together with extra fuses and stuff and like creating like as crazy of an amateur firework show as you can get away with, right? Well. Illegally in North Carolina. Yeah, well, it's illegal in the sense that going 62 and a 55 is or 64 and a 55 is because. Okay. No. Okay. The, yeah, they, they on July fourth. They turn a blind eye. They turn a blind eye. In fact, I've had the cops, and when I say cops in this setting, I mean C O P S, drive by while I was in the process of lighting a crap ton of fireworks <coughs> on, on, you know, lighting them, and they just kind of like nod at you. It's like, yeah, oh, it's Fourth of July. So um, you're American. I'm American. Oh man, I I'll have to show you. I've still got video of some of it because. 
we were renting a uh, one of my well, we were staying at one of my uh, father in law's houses that he's got down there. They have like a you know property company that's got different houses that you can rent. So we kind of like reserved one of them, and it was one that was on the sound that had a very long dock that went out into the sound. I was like, this is perfect. We're gonna take all the fireworks out onto the dock and light them. Oh no! But I was like, I'm not gonna take all day to get the extra fuse. I was like, just get me a powerful lighter that you know, is a windproof like torch kind of lighter and then we'll just figure it out in the moment. You know, just take some stuff out there and light it and then you're not, string some stuff together. You're not used to all that prep anymore. You're, I'm not, I'm not you don't do, work hard I'm not anymore. Do work. And also, I had Locke and uh, then his two teenage cousins and, and then my brother-in-law. So we had a lot of help to like get the things out on the dock and, and first of all, I don't remember exactly how much money we spent on fireworks 10 years ago, which is the last time I did this, but my father-in-law went a little bit nuts with the amount of stuff that he bought. Like he sent one of his employees down to South Carolina and the guy came back and like the, he had like a twin cab or like quad cab truck or whatever and like the whole back seat was just stacked to the ceiling with fireworks. Like this guy had been in an accident and there was a little spark. Oh my gosh. He would have like created a, a crater. He there a was, there was just, no, not a smoker. He wasn't a smoker on that day. But anyway, we set these things off and the cool thing about setting the fireworks off in the sound is you've got all these people watching from, of course we've got my family that's up there on the dock, on the deck watching from the house and then you've got everyone else that just come out to the back of their houses along the sound on both sides to watch all the fireworks happening. Oh. So by about the- Did you warn them? About, no, no, by about the second round of lighting a couple of these like, you know, they basically come in these like boxes of fireworks that have like, it's just a box with a fuse on it and it has got a bunch of mortars like built into it. Some, uh -huh. Sometimes it's 10 shots, sometimes it's 40 shots, right? Anywhere in between. It basically is its own little show. Yeah. We had like 50 of these <laughs> things. So there were times where we were lining up like six and twisting two fuses together and three of us would light them at the same time and then run. And um, by the time we did like the second round of these things, we had an audience. Like people, like people can tell when you've done, you've gotten through with a little bit, uh, one round, right? It's like last firework goes off and then it gets quiet and then all of a sudden, all these people from wider and wider radius would go, woo, woo, -hoo! woo! <laughs> And then we just, we had an audience. That's That sounds like a rebel yell. And now, and then there's other people doing fireworks at other houses. But then by about the fourth, or and first of all, there were like 15 rounds that we did. But by like the third or fourth round, one guy yells out, you win! <laughs> <laughs> it's and funny. And I was like, that's all I needed to hear. It's funny, uh, yeah, <laughs> that is what, that is the, what you, that's specifically what you were after, right? right? Uh-huh. You win, not that's awesome. Like he said exactly <laughs> what you wanted to hear. Well, no, I told I, I told my father in law. I was like, when I when he when the guy said all the things, I was like, we are going to have the best fireworks show. We're going to win fireworks in, in boys. this area. You know, non professional that yeah. is. Yeah, it's funny you talk about the woos because last year we were watching fireworks and um, from our house, like from our bedroom deck. We just happened to through some trees see the fireworks display of the local high school. And I'm like, we realized it, we ran upstairs and we started, this year the kids watched them but we were hanging out downstairs with some friends and we didn't, you seen one firework, you seen them all. I'm sorry, to, I'm sorry that that's my attitude but last year, yeah, you hadn't seen. We were shows. so elated because they, the fireworks started going off and it was me and Christy and the kids up there and all of a sudden behind me I just hear, woo! And I turn around and Christy's like, what? <laughs> I'm from Kingston, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, and that's almost down to the beach where you were, is where she grew well, up. It, and it's like, that's a, I, I mean, I, that's just an instinctive Southern thing. When you see something on fire in the sky, woo! Yeah, well here's the thing, it's, this is, the reason it's, not only is it better than a professional show because you're the one in control of, of it, but like you're so close to it. Let me, let me so close, I'm gonna, so unsafe. 
I'm gonna show this is this is Locke filming us light lighting one of the rounds. Okay. <laughs> this is all on Instagram, but Good gracious. Oh my word. He's filming he's, he's filming, filming or the wrong part of it. He's filming the I critiqued gazebo. I critiqued him. <laughs> what a I'll show you. I'll show you when I filmed it. Wait. Even when he films the fireworks, he's filming just below the fire. Look at that! Oh. Is the is the pier catching on fire? Well, we'll get to that in a second. Oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> and let me, and I'll show you one that I filmed. This is this is now. I, there's you can see a flame down there, right? You see that flame? Yeah. What is that flame? Well, it's one of the things I didn't put this on Instagram because I was a little embarrassed about this. The zooming is. That's a lot. Now, when I filmed, ran back, guys, they, a bunch of rednecks out there with their shirts off. <laughs> oh like, good. Yeah, I'll show you. That's one set? Oh my gosh. These are huge. That's huge. These are massive. You've never seen this before. You've never been present for one of these. Uh-uh. I mean like, it's a legit fireworks show. You thought I was talking like little bottle rockets? I didn't know it was that big. <laughs> no, no, it's, and listen, you're right next to it. Like it's, it, in fact, we did, we had you getting sprayed? We had five left over and we took them to the other beach house which is up on the uh, intercoastal waterway like up on the Noose River. Okay. And there's okay. another dock. We take it out on that and I lit like six that night. This is Saturday night, so July 7th, I guess, just a couple nights ago. And uh, technically I think they're illegal by that point. <laughs> Oh yeah, they're not turning a blind eye. But we had more. You're like going out on a dock so as to. For the view. Oh, you're not doing that so if it catches on fire, the whole dock will just burn into the water and then it's safe? Well, it does, that does help. <laughs> because I'll get back to how we had to handle that fire in a second. Um, there was one where the wind was coming back towards us and some, they don't always go as high as they should. And there's one that, blew up and then it blows up into a bunch of different pieces and then it blows up again in smaller explosions. Mm -hmm. I swear there was one that happened where the second small explosion, I'm the one closest to the action because I light it then I kinda go down the stairs because this dock had like two levels and then I'm kinda watching it. One came, I swear that I was getting hit with the little sparks. It's not safe. As I said on my Instagram, I gave a, my wife made me do a disclaimer. Jesse was like, you need to do a disclaimer so people don't do this and I said, my wife wants me to give you a disclaimer. Do not do this unless you're a redneck. It's what <laughs> it's what I said. As cool as this looks <laughs> and as fun as much fun as I'm having. You will hurt yourself if you're not a redneck. Um but so fire time. So Jesse first of all she says, "Do you have a fire extinguisher?" Like right before we're getting ready to do this and I'm like, "No." <laughs> and uh I was like, "We're doing it in the, over the water and She's like, you need to have a fire extinguisher. And I was like, okay. So we, they had one at this house, like underneath mm -hmm. the sink. And what happens after these things go off, as, as you can see, it's so hot that sometimes they just end up catching fire after the, all the stuff's gone. And so I'm looking at that and me and Chris are like trying to figure out what to do. But So we ran and got the fire extinguisher, but they, they basically expended, it was one of the fire extinguishers like we used in the t-shirt war where it was the powder. Oh. And it runs out real fast. And then we had more fires happening. So then they had to, so we had to send the boys, the fire brigade to the house to get buckets and we took sound water and started throwing it all over the fireworks. And I will say that one of them got was on fire before the water got there and I had to throw it into the water. But we did get Isaiah to go retrieve it. The, the, he had to go to the next dock. The, the damp. Yeah. Trash. Um, yeah, so everything's good. Still good. We still good? Yeah, we're still good. Man, you make me nervous. No, and it, that's I, why I'm not there. We I understand can't, we can't that. Both be there. I, I do understand that it's not Somebody's responsible. Somebody's got to carry on. It's not responsible. One of these rednecks has got to carry on. Uh, but you know what? You got to have a little fun every once in a while, man. You got to celebrate. Uh, but it was so hot. I mean, I I forget how hot it is. We'll, we'll, we'll find out next week. Hotter than the 4th of July. We'll be back in North Carolina for something that we'll tell you about uh, that's novel related, uh, but we're going, we're going out there next week. That's right. It's unbelievably hot. I walked outside 
my freaking sunglasses fogged up. Like I, I actually don't remember that happening growing up in North Carolina. I walk outside, you, they, they just fogged up completely because I was going from AC. But your face, your California face gets hotter. Is adjusted? No, it's not adjusted. So when you go back to North Carolina, your California face just, it's like, oh my gosh, my face is so hot, I gotta get rid of it, and it pushes it onto the glasses and they fog up. Oh, that's very scientific. But if you live there all the time, it's like, oh, you know, you learn how to not fog up your glasses. And it rained. Your face learns that. It rained every day. But it, that didn't you, help. you didn't care because you were already wet. Like you cannot just, you just go outside and you're wet. I mean, you immediately start sweating from everywhere. That's why you, you said, a bunch of rednecks not having shirts on, but you very quickly learn, I might as well not have a shirt on. You might as well be naked, because any clothes that you have just immediately stick to you. Like I put jeans on to get back oh, on the gosh. plane coming uh -uh. back yesterday, and I just had jeans on to basically walk to my car, and I was like, I remember now why we always wore shorts. Like we were, we yeah. were, we, me and you would go to work in shorts. And I remember there was a point I actually remember. Shorts and flip flops. I remember when we were filming the documentary Looking for Miss Locklear, we had a conversation. We wore jeans because we didn't want to look like a couple of dumbasses walking around in shorts, but right. we were so hot. We the were so whole hot. Summer. That was the first time we made a conscious choice to only wear pants. Did you feel like a dumbass wearing shorts? Wearing shorts everywhere? a little bit, but I adjusted, like, I adjusted quickly, man. Yeah, it's not, you shouldn't feel that way, but we do. No, no. It's, Something about shorts just makes you seem like. And I don't, I do not. And you what would, does it make you seem like? A bare leg, bare legged man. I don't know. But if they're pl if they're pleated and you can tuck your shirt into it, then you're back. That's not the kind that I had. You're in total. You're you're just you're just da dad. It gets so hot and it gets super hot in California as well. It gets to be it'll be like 110 towards the end of the summer here. But it's never so hot that you actually feel like if I gotta get into shorts, like it really doesn't. No, it's because the humidity just do feels you differently. Do you feel like there is a way for you to feel cool? And I don't mean temperature wise. I mean like trendy in shorts. In shorts, I don't. I, I don't see an. I don't see an option. That I think for us. That's a good question. Well, I just don't think. I don't think we can pull off shorts. I think there are shorts out there that are trendy shorts. I just don't have them. And I don't know what constitutes a trendy short. I think they're a little bit shorter than the shorts that I wear, probably. Got more yeah. interesting patterns. A little shorter. And I think you gotta have like a tank top on and maybe a visor. None of those things <laughs> can you pull off. I don't think, I, I can't either. Yeah, well we should I try. Think, I, can't, I think I can pull off shorts. Well I think I can pull off shorts. Well, I don't think you can. You see my legs? It's, I'm not commenting, commenting <laughs> on your legs. I'm just saying just the exposed nature of your legs. I, I have a lot of leg. You're, I mean your thighs at eye level to some people. Yeah, I have a lot of leg, I do. A um, Couple of other notable things. I drove around a car that was an advertisement for my father-in-law's dentist, dentistry. That was the car that I had. It was wrapped in, a, in an ad. Oh gosh, did you get paid? No. That's actually better. It was wrapped in an ad that had my deceased grandmother-in-law on it. Her face? Yes. What? Yeah, she was in one of the ads. What? what? What do you mean in one of the ads? How many ads were on the car? Well, it was like the whole thing was wrapped. It was in like, your In your dead grandmother-in-law? Yeah, well she's, she, re she just passed like a few months ago. Was she, what position was she in? It's just her face, she's smiling and showing her beautiful teeth. Really? Mm -hmm. On every side of the car? Just she's on one side and there's another group of people. She's like her and some other people on one side and there's other people on the other side. So that, I, was a, I was a driving ad. That's, I mean it's a free, it's free transportation. I drove it everywhere. Drove it all over the place. Yeah, that's. that's, that's I did not get paid for it though. And I yeah. thought it might be, I thought about asking. <laughs> and when you hopped out, what were you wearing? Shorts, man. Yeah, exactly. I, 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 well, this is, I didn't. You were the total package, brother. No, every morning I woke up, I put on shorts and nothing else. No shoes, no shirt, and mm -hmm. I remained that way for all of the day. Oh, I don't, I don't blame you. I'm just saying, and if it wasn't it's not good for the brand. And if it wasn't improper, I wouldn't have had shorts on. You know what I'm saying? Like you, 
it's so hot that there's no difference between the inside oh, of your I body know. and the outside of your body. I know, I'm just saying. So you don't need to protect it in any way. Were people coming up to you asking you about the business? Oh yeah. Really? I made stuff up. But they didn't believe you because you were wearing shorts. <laughs> and you were shirtless. So I think you kind of negated who's any. The, who's that shirtless man? Is he a, is he is that the shirtless dentist? <laughs> <laughs> it's so hot. I understand why he doesn't wear a shirt out, when out, he does his work. Out here, there's a plumber called the Smell Good Plumber. The but the shirtless dentist the shir- is better. The, shir- the shorted dentist. Because shir- I, technically, I only had shorts on. But the shirtless dentist is something that I. I mean, you can just you're sitting in the chair, laid back, and all of a sudden you got armpit in your face. Yeah, he's reaching over trying to get a utensil. And let me tell you, that armpit stinks. I know it does. It, I, I don't. I would put deodorant on in the morning, but I might as well didn't because see, so you see the slippery slope you're on. You just start stinking. You just it, you stink constantly. <laughs> I mean, I then your hair gets long and you're like Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Peter. <laughs> um, I will say I had a dream about what. Well, when I was when I was on vacation, I had a dream. Oh this is, now. This is really crazy. I don't understand what happened. I think I may have seen some like news report because I had a dream where like the Saudi crown prince was flying a very small open hatch plane, like an old style plane, but he was pulling behind him another plane that was pulling behind it another plane yes. that was pulling behind it a boat. A plane train with a boat was, caboose. That was pulling behind another boat that was very, very large, like a cruise ship style boat, and then on and on and on. And, and were it was those all f- in the air. All in the air? He was in the air, even the boat was in the air. Where were you? You were in the dentist's I car? Was, I was in, an, in a, some vantage point where I could see all this. From the ground? I feel like I was on a cliff and he was going by because I feel like I was eye level with it, but he was over the ocean. Okay, you were eye level. And with here's it. what I thought in the dream. I was like, man, I gotta remember the details of this for ear biscuits. In the dream. But I wasn't thinking about in the dream. I was thinking about it as if I've gotta remember this moment where the crown yes. prince flew his crazy plane train. Yeah, you believed it. You were, you believed you were living the moment. And so ironically, now I'm telling you about seeing the crown prince in his plane train, but I'm telling you about it one layer removed because it was a dream about telling you about it. But now I'm telling you about the dream in which I thought of telling you about the plane train. Wow. That's weird. I think you shouldn't have told us. I think you should have kept it in dreamland. Um, I think you should email the Saudi prince. But man, you just wait. When we go back, it's gonna be hot. I'm only packing shorts now. I Can you get on a plane? Nothing but shorts. Is it like no shirt, no shoes, no service type you situation? You have to wear a shirt. Do you though? Yes. I've seen no signs. I, there's not say signs, but people shirtless, no problem. People routinely get kicked off of planes In for fact, taking their shirt off. No, people routinely get kicked off of planes usually women, for having overly revealing clothes. Now, I'm not saying I agree with this policy, but just last week, there was a report of a woman who just had like a strapless tank top thing on, I don't know what it was. tube top. And she got asked to leave the freaking plane, and it wasn't even really risque. And I, so if they do that, there's, and I don't know if it's an airplane, if it's like an airline policy, but yeah, you, you have to wear a shirt. You can't, if you just take your shirt off, in the middle of the flight, they'll ask you to put it back on. Sir, could you please put your shirt back on? They'll say that, and then if you say, it's so hot. <laughs> but it's so hot, <laughs> officer. It's not gonna work. I don't, you think they would, I don't know if they would turn the plane around. Uh, from, from, from the flight deck, uh, we're gonna have to take a, a U-turn and go back to RDU, because we got a man who will not put a shirt on. I don't think that would happen, <laughs> you know. But, what uh, about a mesh tank top? You see nipple? Yeah, the straps are low and the nipples are on either side of them, and they're my nipples. Your nipples. Yeah. Well, for reasons that I'm still beginning to to try to unravel, male nipples and female nipples are per- perceived <laughs> differently. <laughs> I mean, one's acceptable on Instagram and one isn't. 
Uh, so I would have to say that your mesh. And Instagram your, is the modicum of morality. Your mesh nipples will probably get by on the plane. Oh, but they're if not you, meshed. They're beside mesh. Oh, the oh the mesh is on the inside of the nipples. Yeah, and that's what you said. I put my tank top on backwards. I think. I think they would. They were, there would be a discussion about whether or not to approach you. Right back there be, when they're trying to put sort out the almonds and the checks mix, they'd be like, "You see, you see seat thirteen B." Yeah, but see, the further back your plane is, like if you're in the second plane, or the third plane being full, pulled by the second plane being. Oh, uh, you're going back to the plane. Then. Plane the less you can wear. So if you're in that second boat, you can be naked. I think the Saudi crown prince has pretty specific standards with the, when it comes to dress though. I thought that so I both I, boats. I think that, I mean, I'm not trying to get into that, into those waters, so you're, but you're, I don't think nipples are okay. It's been a civic podcast. <laughs> um, when you told me, I immediately pictured a plane, p- towing a plane, towing a plane in the air, towing a boat. That was on the group. In the air towing another boat, which was much bigger as you said, but that one's in the water. None of it was in the water. I think it I was in the, the water la- at one time. The last one's in the water. I think it started out in the water. Right, they all, st- were they? All boats start in the water. Well, no, they start in a factory, then they are launched into the, the, the water. Was it a water plane? No, it was a little single engine, open fate, open top, whatever, you, biplane. Saudi Prince is wearing biplane. goggles. Yeah, I don't even know how I recognized Scarf. him. That's pretty much all that happened to me on my vacation. Okay. That's worth mentioning. Well, I hate I missed it. I was at home doing nothing. Wasn't even looking at your Instagram. I don't know what I was doing. Did you, how did you occupy yourself? I'd sit in different places. Did you clean things? Oh yeah. <laughs> um, I would, I would sit in different places and eat different things that were usually vegan. <laughs> I'm not going vegan or anything. I'm just trying to counteract what had happened on tour. It felt good to do that. Crap, am I supposed to have a wreck in effect? No, I I, oh, I, got, I got a wreck, I'm ready. So relieved, I was I'm not ready. ready. I was not ready, don't uh, leave me. This is a little bit of a cheat because I'm gonna wreck something that I wrecked on Twitter, which may lower the value of this recommendation, but I will expand the recommendation. Lower. I will expand the recommendation as so as to make it this somewhat valuable. Okay. Um, you may have seen that I, tweeted <laughs> about Blake Crouch's uh, new book, Recursion. Blake Crouch is a guy, uh, I believe he's from North Carolina. Um, he doesn't live there anymore. She, is he shirtless on his book jacket? No, yeah, he, I believe he, he's shirted. And uh, the first books I ever read by him, he wrote a trilogy uh, called the Wayward Pines Trilogy. The first book is Wayward Pines and then there's two more and I read all those. Um, that was also made into a show. And uh, then he wrote another book called uh, Dark Matter. Which he wrote was another book? What is he, an author? Called uh, Dark Matter, which is all, Wayward Pines is this very, it, it's all kind of like sci-fi, psychological thriller kind of situation if you're into that kind of thing, and I am. Uh, Dark Matter was all about uh, parallel universes, the multiverse and navigating those and uh, just super thoughtful book and when he goes into you know sort of the science behind these very crazy uh, concepts and the way that he explores them, it can get a little squirrely sometimes when you're trying to approach things that there is some sort of scientific understanding established about these things but then you're trying to write a fictional book about them and I just feel like he strikes a really good balance. And then Recursion is his latest um, book which is all about the nature of memory and uh, some very sci-fi stuff that is uh, based on some current understanding of the way memory works, but taking that to a, a very sort of unexpected place. Anyway, highly recommend Blake Crouch in general, his latest book, uh, you could start with any of these. His latest book is Recursion. I recommend it if you're into um, sort of a wild ride for your mind. What are you doing over there? Nothing, I'm listening. I'm sorry, I, there was a tangle in my thing and I was just letting you do your thing. <laughs> I'll fix this afterward. Um, Recursion, you say? A wild uh, ride for your mind uh, that's very, very entertaining. A wild mind ride. Yeah. Take a ride on Blake Crouch's mind. Did you get it untangled? You didn't get it untangled. I said I'd do it later. 
All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with us, listening at us, and um, we'll speak at you again next week. Hashtag Air Biscuits. We look at those. We look at those. Bye. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.